Hello guys, today we're going to take a look at one of these CQ servos with the 4 wire output, your normal servo only has 3, your normal hobby servo so we're going to try and figure out why it has 4 wires and with any luck we'll be able to uh, figure out how to control it you can see this little black blob here, so that's usually a chip on board and what they do there is to basically just put the uh, microchip die straight onto the PCB and cover it over with this blob and that just saves a little bit of money uh, the rest of it looks alright, kinda looks a little bit kinda bodged the way the soldering doesn't really look uh, like it was soldered with a machine but uh, all in all it looks okay, I mean it's probably a pretty cheap servo and that's all they need uh, you can see our potentiometer here we take that half of it up, you can see the little um, the little arms here they are the contacts which go on this uh, resistive traces that you can see inside the resistor here so each of these little lines that's a resistive trace so depending on where the little contacts are along this uh, resistive layer will determine uh, the resistance of the potentiometer so that's how you figure out your angle when you're using a microcontroller you turn the potentiometer change the resistance you change the voltage using that and then when you measure the voltage you know what angle you're at this little chip down here is the motor driver it's a HT6751 I think and the data sheet says that that is a, a camera motor driver as far as I know the connection on the back of the tractor which goes to the trailers or the attachments is an I2C or I squared C uh, bus so you have um, your uh, ground, your power, a clock signal and the data signal so if that's what you use for the trailers and the attachments they're probably using the same bus for the um, servos so that's what I guess is happening so what I'm going to try and do first is probe the main controller board this guy here and see if we can uh, find out or see the clock signal or basically see if anything is happening when we have the servo connected to the board I'm pretty sure this long wire was for the steering servo so I've connected that back up but we still need to find a, a ground and a positive so we can see here I removed the, the pins from this part of the board and you can see we have a, it says power in here and if we follow the traces on the back here, we can see that we have two which come over here. They appear to line up with the power in. So, taking a closer look, we can see that both of those traces come to the outermost pins here, which are the servo sockets. And if we look at the servo wires, we have a brown and a red. You would assume that they are the, uh, the power wires, like uh, ground and the positive, maybe 3.3 or... 3.7 volts something like that since we don't have a battery for the tractor I can't know for sure what these voltages are so I'm just assuming that it's 3.3 volts and I'm going to power it up to 3.3 volts if you're working on your own tractor you'd want to make sure that those are the right voltages before you apply any voltage to any of these pins I'm not worrying about the voltages because this board is of no value to me I'm replacing it with an Arduino anyway so if I fry the board it doesn't make any difference for me but you'd want to make sure before you start playing around with these pins if you need this board again that you uh, get the right voltages here you don't want to damage your board but following the traces back we can see that this one is most likely ground so we we'll stick a connector on the ground because follow the trace along there we're coming to the outside the outside wire is the brown wire and the one beside that follow the traces back it's coming right beside it and we can probably assume that that is going to be the positive so we'll put the positive on there so let's see if we can find any signals on the board without the uh, controller it's unlikely that this control board is actually initialized so we might not find anything but we'll give it a go anyway so I have it powered up to 3.3 volts I can hit the now if I hold on to the power line you can see that's the 3.3 volt line it's only dipping because I'm uh, losing contact there when we look at the traces on the back here the two outer wires the ground wires are connected along all the servos that's what you would expect then the next wire is also connected 
so that would probably be a clock so let's see if there's anything on the clock no nope, nothing happening there so that's only going to change when it's trying to send data to the servo so the servo hasn't moved so we can only assume that uh, there's no data being sent then you can see we have individual signal wires here so there's a test point for a signal wire nothing there nothing there that's for data to one of the servos um, we have a lot of different test points so let's test a few see do we get anything we look to have some sort of clock signal there or that could be coming from the crystal okay we're not seeing a whole lot happening when the board is already powered up so let's try plugging it out and plugging it back in and see if it tries to initialize the servo when the tractor initially gets power it looks like something happened there looks like something happened so let's see can we capture that okay well let's see if we can capture that pulse that we seen there so there it is let's see can't really tell too much from that let's see can we capture it again So there's clearly something happening there, but uh, it's very hard to see what it is. So there appears to be something happening when we start to board up on the clock line anyway. So let's have a look and see if there's anything on the signal line as well. So signal line this appears to be the signal line for the steering motor so we'll try that looks to be a bit of data there too let's uh, give it another go So it's definitely sending something to the servo when it starts up, but uh, whether we'll be able to read that or not, that's the next thing. We might be able to intercept that signal with the uh, Arduino, but uh, it's a bit of a long shot I think. But just before I try that, I'll uh, hook in all the other parts of the tractor and just see if there's anything else happen if all the parts are connected. So I think I have everything wired up properly now, so let's just uh, hit the power switch see what happens. We've seen a little jump from the lights there I'll do that again so our lights flashed on same with the tail lights so that's the sign the processor was working anyway there looks to be something there but I guess that that is noise from the power supply so I'll get a battery and see if that's still there ok I'll hook it up to a battery now no noise so whatever that noise was it was on the uh, power lines nothing to do it had nothing to do with the board well we didn't learn too much there so what I think I'll do is hook up an Arduino and see if we can intercept any signals on the I2C bus but uh, it's unlikely because uh, there doesn't seem to be anything happening here except when you uh, hit the start button 
I think I'd probably need an entire tractor, including a controller, to really figure out how to control the servo. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do now is use a little scanner that I've uh, downloaded onto the Arduino here. And basically, it's going to try and find anything on an I2C bus. So if this is on an I2C bus, we should find the addresses of the uh, the parts or we'll find nothing, we'll just have to give it a go so pin 4 should be the data, pin 5 should be the clock so let's try and get this into the clock here it's a little bit difficult 5 is the clock which we figured out was the third pin out the clock and this will be the data Okay, it says it's scanning, so I'll give it a few minutes and see what happens. Well, it scanned it, but it didn't find any address. So what I'll try next is a servo on its own. Give our ground. Positive. 3.3 volts. Next one is the clock, which is a five. Oh, that's there, and then the data. And that should be the mall. Clear the screen. Well, as you can see here, it didn't find the device this time either. So that's about all I can think of to do with this. Well, that's all my ideas exhausted, and we're no closer to uh, controlling the servo yet. But I'm just going to go ahead and start making this tractor because I want to make a bit of progress on it. And uh, if anyone has any suggestions on how we can control this, if they know what uh, communication method it uses or what commands that we need to send to it, let me know in the comments or in the forum and then I'll do another video where I can uh, show you guys how it's done. Uh, to continue with the build, I'm just going to remove this PCB, control the potentiometer and the motor directly from the Arduino using a, a TB6612 FNG motor driver, same as I use for the drive motors. And that should let me get this build uh, finished pretty quickly. But I'll try and take the board off here uh, pretty carefully. So if someone does let me know what I need to do to control this, I can just hook up a potentiometer on a motor and show you how it's done. So it's a pity that didn't work, but hopefully we'll get it figured out at some stage. If you liked the video, make sure to hit the like button and the share button and all that, and uh, that's pretty much everything, so thanks very much for watching.